preached all this last week. I'm ahead of all of them. And I'm going to be ahead on this. Now, is Jesus a son of God? Yes or no? The angel appeared to Mary, and he said in Luke 135, because she was questioning herself, how is this going to be that I'm going to have this son of God, and I know not a man? The angel answered and said to her, Mary, that holy thing which you shall bring forth shall be called the Son of God. Amen. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, ha, <laughs> ha, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son of God does not have life. Verse 36, the wrath of God abides on him. And that goes for all you guys that are trying to take the deity away from the Lord Jesus Christ. My Bible says that he is God, Romans 9, 5, 1 Timothy 3, 16. But let's go on about the Son of God. Boy, do I love this. Hebrews 1, verse 8. This is the Father, Yahweh. Not Allah, Yahweh, speaking to his own son in Hebrews 1.8 and says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. He not only calls him his son, he calls him God. And I'm going to tell you something. You may not like this. I don't care if you do or not. I'm sticking to this book. What you guys are doing is the spirit of the Antichrist. Antichrist shall come, 1 John 2.18, 1 John 2.22, 1 John 4.3, and 2 John 1.7. But what is it that God calls the spirit of Antichrist? Back to 1 John 2.22. Whosoever denies the relationship between the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. God forgive you, man. May you get right with God soon and come back to preaching the truth. But I don't think people... People want to support you anymore. You know, Jack, actually, everyone can have an opinion. And if that's what they want to do, that's their opinion. But, you know, the Word of God stands. God had the Word for us to uh, believe and so we'd know the truth. How wonderful it is to know the truth because of the Bible. Thank you for the uh, Bible. There. Thy Word is truth, John 17, 17. Take your dirty hands off of it and don't change it. Don't Boy, change it. you know what God says if you do? Remember, Jesus is behind the writing of the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things, the 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, to the churches. Now, over to verse 18. Jesus, listen, God speaking, I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. You're in trouble with God. Amen. You know, Jack, a few moments ago you used a word, apostasy. Did you ever know that word? What does apostasy mean, Jack? Apostates. What does that mean? A defection from the Christian faith, which is happening right now. And you know what shocks me, Rexella? That La Zavatore Romano, the paper of the popes for almost 200 years, just on January 17th had a full two-page article honoring the King James Version of Wallace. These Protestant heretics are tearing God's word apart. Oh, I know, Jack, but I want to say thank you. You are a great Protestant minister, and you are sticking to the Word of God. My brother Bob, Dr. Robert Shelton, Bob Jones University, many of the universities standing up for the Word of God. Amen. And Dallas Theological Seminary standing up for the Word of God. We need Biola to... Biola, all of them. Absolutely. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about apostates. I'm going to give Jack about, ooh, nine words here. He's going to tell us where it's found. The Bible calls apostates... Grievous wolves. Acts 20:29. 20, and then also the Bible calls the apostates unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6:14. Deceitful workers. 2 Corinthians 11:13. And this one, enemies of the cross of Christ. Philippians 3:18. And Jack here's one, men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. 1 Timothy 6:5. Vessels of dishonor. 2 Timothy 2:20. False teachers. 
2 uh, Peter 2, 1 and 2. Then the last one on my list, Antichrist. I quoted this earlier. I quote it again. 1 John 2, 22, whosoever denies the Father and Son relationship, that he is the Son of the living God. He is an Antichrist. And you preachers who say, we have changed all these things to please the Muslims and we're able to reach him that way, you're reaching him by destroying the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world, 1 John 4, 14. Oh, Jack, how very, very serious this is. There seem to be some well-known names going in the direction of apostasy, going away from what we know the Bible teaches about the Lord America's false prophets. Then you see their chrism, oh, and that has to do with the one world church. Look at Rabbi Garagori. Here he is, and he has written something very, very good that we must read together. He stated leaders such as Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, Bill Hybels, Evangelicals of America, along with the support of 300 other less well-known Christian leaders, all signed a document asking Muslim leaders around the world for forgiveness for the Crusades and for the excesses of war on terrorism. But, you know, Jack, there's more here that I'd like for you to read, if you would. Oh, please listen, folks. Worldview Weekend. President Brandon House warns, I'm troubled by the trend to appeal to Muslims through political correctness. In 2007, Rick Warren, Bill Hybels, and others signed the Yale document that says that Muslims and Christians worship the same God. A Yale document speaks of one God when it declared, we applaud that a common word between us and you stresses so insistently the unique devotion to one God. How said, Muslims and Christians do not worship the same God? That's blasphemy. And that's baloney from Dr. Jack Van Empe as well. And God's going to deal with these people. Rexella, here's what we're going to do with these people. Are we to fellowship with them? Some 60,000 preachers are following some of these leaders. Quit it. They are misleading you. Oh, if we could be like the Apostle Paul who said, follow me as I follow Jesus, 1 Corinthians 11. 1. Don't follow these hypocritical apostates. Why? To obey God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hear it. Romans 16, verse 17, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ which you receive and avoid them. That's plain enough, isn't it? Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And then in 2 John 1, verses 9 to 11, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not the Father. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. If there comes any unto you who brings not the doctrine of Christ, receive him not into your home nor bid him Godspeed, say God bless you to him, for he that does so is a partaker of his evil deeds, and God will deal with you. Come out from among them and be you separate. Second Corinthians 6, 18, obey God. Oh, yes, Jack, we need to obey the Bible, and you know who I'm going to believe? I'm going to believe Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. And I accepted him as my Savior. I believe him. I came to the Father and asked forgiveness. Will you open your heart to the Lord right now? Jack, would you give that all-important invitation? Oh, Jesus is such a precious Savior that men would take their dirty hands and try to destroy him to reach a false religion. God forgive them. Now, do you want this Jesus? He loves you. He died for you. He agonized and shed his precious blood as it flowed down Calvary for you to cleanse and wash you. Now pray this simply after me. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, I trust in you today. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. In your holy name I pray it. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. You just became a child of God. Now, write to me. I'll send this to you as soon as I hear from you. There's my address. First Steps, 
in a new direction. The Lord is walking with you right now. Now, we talked about chrism, and once again, we want to present this as our offer of the week. Take a look at this promo, please. Today's video offer is undoubtedly the most powerful and undeniably the most insightful work the Vanapies have ever created. Why? It deals with the final sign pointing to the imminent return of Christ. Here's why. The Antichrist and false prophet cannot appear to control the world politically or religiously until the rapture occurs and believers are removed. Dr. Vanapie dogmatically and prophetically believes that June 26, 2011, is the beginning of the countdown to the most momentous event in history, Christ's return. On that day, churches met in 26 states to begin the union of Christianity and Islam, called Chrislam. In this video study entitled, Chrislam, the One World Religion Emerging, Dr. and Mrs. Van Epi have documented the most shocking information ever taped, using over 30 political and religious leaders to back up and verify every word spoken, including Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, President Obama, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey, Shirley MacLaine, plus Jewish rabbis and Muslim clerics. What shocking statements did these celebrities make for or against Chrislam, the one world religion? You'll be shocked, stunned, and startled as you hear it. Order this video immediately if you want to know what in the world is going on politically and religiously as you examine Chrislam, the one world religion emerging. Friends, you really need to order this right now. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it right away. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order Chrislam, the one world religion emerging on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and let me just encourage you, you need to have this because we can't get all this in a 30-minute program. You need to know the information on here. It's so very important. It's relative to your life. So please make the call. There's our address. There's a telephone number. So make the call now. I want to leave you with a very good thought for today. It goes right along with what we've been saying. We read the newspaper to find out what's happening. We read the Bible to find out what's really going on. How true. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.